Their Polonsky clip makes it absolutely clear that tonight is not the Dimbleby lecture. And when you've heard Dr. Humphrey, I think you'll understand why I'm entering this caveat. We do have two major annual television lectures, Dimbleby and Polonsky, and I'm sure you'd agree that it wouldn't have been very sensible for both of them to have covered the same general thesis. Now, this thesis is likely to prove highly controversial, but there's nothing wrong with that. We may all be able to agree with the central analysis, but disagree with the conclusions to be drawn from them. And some people might think it's particularly appropriate that it is a Russian proverb which says, make yourself into a sheep and you'll meet a wolf nearby. But that's not the point. What does matter is that the BBC should continue to provide a forum for a wide variety of views, popular or unpopular, and irrespective of whether they represent majorities or minorities. Maybe the BBC isn't quite the Hyde Park speaker's corner of the air. Limited time and airwaves inevitably mean selection. But the editorial processes involved in that selection are finally and irrevocably rooted in free speech. And so I'm very glad that Dr. Humphrey will be talking tonight about the most serious subject of all for mankind. His treatment is novel in that he comes to this from his position as a distinguished a psychologist. He is assistant director of the Department of Animal Behavior at Cambridge. He's carried out fundamental research into the nature of visual perception, including a major part in the discovery of blind sight, that's to say, vision without conscious awareness, the evolution of intelligence, the biology of aesthetics, and the nature of human consciousness have all fallen under his perceptive and original eye. Last year, he won a traveling fellowship for his program called An Illusion of Beauty. Perhaps this might have formed the alternative title for his talk tonight, which is called Four Minutes to Midnight, Dr. Nicholas Humphrey. Jacob Bronowski went in, the, in November 1945 as a member of the British mission to the Japanese city of Nagasaki. In August that year, President Truman, with the agreement of Winston Churchill, had ordered that the city and its population be destroyed by an atomic bomb. The bomb dropped on Nagasaki on August the 9th killed 70,000 people. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima three days earlier killed 140,000. In the central square mile of each city, nine out of every ten people died. Nine out of ten of those nine out of ten weren't soldiers or politicians. They were children, mothers, grey-haired old men and women. At the outbreak of war in 1939, such an attack by the Allies on non-combatant civilians would have been unthinkable. Civilized nations still clung to a morality which enjoined them to respect life and to limit suffering, even of those in arms against them. A morality which taught...